Hello everyone, and welcome to episode 7 of Trials and Trebuchets. I, as always, am your DM Luke, and with me is... Hey y'all, I'm Ben, and I'm playing a level 3 wizard gnome named Winsor Wallaby, and he has his com- and he has a trusty companion, Mr. Wiggles, by his side all the time. Hey everyone, my name is Carla, and I play Integrity Idleberry, a level 3 tiefling rogue, mysterious, with eyes of gold. Hey, it's Sarah, and I play Mira Marchand, a half-elf bard. She doesn't always know what she's doing, but she knows it's her best. And last time on Trials and Trebuchets, the students explored a tile-floored room filled with jars of assorted body parts and plant matter after defeating a small group of appendages. They then found a cylindrical room with a pool in the center, quickly deducing the crank at the bottom would allow them to access the stairs. With some ingenuity and some mage hand manual labor, the students ascended to the second floor of the laboratory. And now we find ourselves upon that second floor. Um, It's a uh, stone-walled building. Uh, The second floor has arches which you can see out into the um black sky you can see that red sun sitting there um it hasn't moved since last you saw it there is a bell at the apex of the tower you're standing in and looking out over the landscape you can see and not the same rooms you saw before but multiple repeating towers that seem to mirror the one you are in currently um to the north you still see a raised room it has black walls and um stairs which lead up towards it other than that is completely unadorned uh there is a door leading off to the left as you come up the staircase and beyond that there is nothing else in this room beyond the bell above you when we look at the other towers how tall are they because that could give us a sign of how many floors are in this Mm -hmm. one they appear to be about um, 60 feet. Not a very tall tower. Okay. 60 feet, not including the um, large um, crest or apex, at which, which is above the final floor mm-hmm. that you are and on. And does there seem to be any way from the towers to the raised room, or would one have to go back downstairs to get there? Um, It doesn't seem like... It seems like these are all just towers that exist in isolation of one another it doesn't seem like there's any paths that connect them so it doesn't look like there's any way from here to the raised I room thought we might still learn something or find some important gear mm-hmm. so there's this door to your left it's a very heavy wooden door with iron bands across it unlike the other doors you've encountered in this area which have been kind of small flimsy wooden doors i'm, I'm gonna go over and i'm gonna try to pull on the door just to see what happens Okay, Uh, it opens with a bit of effort, and inside, the walls are lined with um, bookshelves, a bit decrepit, they're kind of uh, moldy, the books on them have fallen on the ground, as either from the shelves collapsing or from people um, roughhousing in the room or something of the sort, or something of the sort. (laughs) Um, it's very, um, there's a large... Maritimes. The transition is finally happening. <laughs> there's a very long table in the middle of the room upon which sits a... Oh, a large humanoid. Um, it has stitches running all along the length of its skin and instead of hands... Um, like normal humans' hands or normal humanoid skin hands. Hands with flesh upon them. It has almost bear hands. Um, bear like bear or is bear like a bear? Bear like the animal. Um, upon its head, um, or not upon its head, but its head is bald and the stitching seems to be unfinished here. It's missing a few eyes. And I say a few because it has three eye sockets. Um, and the stitching seems to be incomplete around its brain or around the cranial cranial. Cranial. Is that the correct, like that's around like the back of the head there. Um, so that part seems to be unstitched and its brain is accessible at the far end of the room is a orb of water floating about two feet off the ground. 
It is the same brackish water that was filling the jars downstairs. And in this one floats a uh, large iron key. It is not being held in place by anything, however. Um, does the key look the same size as the keyhole to the room on the right that we saw before going into the... That would be a good estimate, yes. Okay. I mean, if I walk in and I see, like, a humanoid person just sitting there, even with a brain exposed... Mm-hmm. Big, I feel like meaty that's gonna claws. Be startling. Yeah. To give you a, like, scale of reference, it's probably, like, eight feet tall. Oh. Jesus it's Christ. immense. Like, it's been... It's like a stitched together, um, creature. Just made okay. to look humanoid. Okay. Oh my god! Uh, hello? C- can you- are you conscious? Can you hear me? I don't think we should be talking to it! Um, are you alive? Yeah? Or, uh, what, what, hello? There seems to be no response from it. It doesn't even budge, no, um, twitch of any muscles, nothing. Do you think someone's, like, building a person in here? They could be, and then I look around. There's literally nothing. Um, there's bookshelves. There's bookshelves, uh-huh. and the orb, and the humanoid, uh-huh. and the table. Uh-huh. And some of the books are open on the table if you wanted to take a look. Most of them are just like anatomy um, books or books about um, surgical technique. Hmm. Can I get a clear look at that key in the brackish water? Sure, what did you want to look at it for? Um, just to look at its form, its size. Absolutely, it it's be. fairly large, made of this thick iron. Um, it doesn't seem rusted, despite being suspended in water. Uh, the portcullis in the, in the uh, hallway, which Mira has made the connection to, was rusted. So if you want to take that as a hint for anything, it's not. Um, hmm. It's perfectly floating in the middle of this water. It's very plain. There's nothing overly ornate about it. It seems to be a uh, completely average craft. Hmm. Um, looking at the humanoid itself, does it still seem like well preserved? Like, if there were somebody to be building a body, does it seem like this person started building it a long time ago and abandoned it, or does it seem like this is something that was fairly recent in terms of decay and the like? Different pieces of the skin seem to have different uh, levels of age to them some of them seem to be much older more um closer to expiration i might say um some of them seem a bit fresher okay okay so if somebody is building a person some of these things look pretty fresh so this person whoever they are is probably still around so we should probably hurry because I kind of don't want to be interrupted by the kind of person that would build somebody. Yeah, you make a fair point. Uh, I'm going to go up to the orb, and I'm going to just try to stick my hand in it and try to see if I can take the key. Your hand is... Re- if, it's, if, it, if it just looks like water. like It does look like water. It's like this kind of... it has It's water with almost a green tinge to it's it. It's sewer water. Um, <laughs> your hand is repelled as you try to grab into the water, though. It does You feel the wet surface of it, but you cannot... Um, submerge your hand. What if one tries to like pick up the orb itself? Like, is it is it also unmovable? Because you just said it's floating, right? It's just a floating ball of water. Um, if you had some, it doesn't seem to be in any vessel of some sort that you could um, move it in. But the actual orb of water, mm-hmm. like, could one hold the orb and like take um, it with? No, it seems to be suspended there. Can I use my shape of water on it? Uh, what does shape of water? What does shape work? water do? <laughs> um, it makes hey shape of water beautiful man. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, it helps you find a life companion who loves you very much. <laughs> wow. Um, it says that you can um instantaneously move or otherwise change the flow of water as you direct up to five feet in any direction. Does this water like have any flow to it, or is it just like it's completely stagnant? Like it's like a it will. Like, if it's, it was in a fishbowl, it will... It's like, like someone had it in a fishbowl fish bowl and broke and the, glass. the glass. Yeah. Hmm. That's a great way of putting it. Interesting. So would you like to try to use flow of water? 
if it works yes or is it called flow of, <laughs> what is it called shape water um shape of Not shape water. flow of water shape um, water i think i just said water too maybe i am what transitioning <laughs> to the east coast I'm water in here. um as hard as you focus on your newfound skill in magics um it doesn't seem to be able to penetrate some sort of um barrier can i freeze it is that part of the spell yes you freeze the water provided that there are no creature in it the water freezes Mm. and then can i take it when it's frozen it's suspended in the air still what if we break the ice then maybe if it shatters we can get the key inside we could do that. Does anyone have anything hard with them? Um, Is that proper word. I can oh. punch it. I don't know if that's <laughs> gonna do anything. This might. Um, sorry if this is just me intervening. Um, but I wanted to help, and I thought of a great idea. There was a tool cupboard downstairs that you all just explored moments ago that had hammers in it. Yes, there was. Well, no one wants to go down. Is there? I mean, I could run quickly and go get something. I'll just, I'll just be the little delivery um. gnome. <laughs> That's a very cute image. Yeah, it's just, I just have like a little box or like a little item, and I just hold it over my head while running. Oh well, that's unnecessary, it seems. But however you want to do it. Yeah. I do also have my instruments on me. I could try to smash it with my horn. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that's pretty like rock star of you. I kind of want to do that. Play a fucking tune and sm- and shatter it like glass. I, ca- I kind of want to take my horn out, mm-hmm. play the John Cena riff, and then try to smash the ice with my horn. Well, what's your horn made of? Probably brass. Okay. Make an attack roll. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. It's going to destroy it. Mm, it's not, because that was a six. Uh, you make contact. It is a stationary orb of ice. Um, again, this seeming ward around the orb of water, and it just bends your horn at a 90 degree oh my angle. No. Okay, I know we're trapped in a book and everything and this should probably not be my biggest concern, but my horn. I definitely thought that was going to go differently and I probably should have saved the riff playing for after the thing broke. Does anyone have a better idea? Uh how long how big is the damage on the horn? Like is it in, like It's it's severe. It could be fixed with mending. Okay, I'm going to do that. I'm going to take out my two lodestones okay. stones and rub them together, and then cast Mending to fix the dent. Absolutely. It just <laughs> unbends. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Winsler. I smash it again. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> um, A less severe dent, but it's still a dent, and it would affect the sound of the instrument. Is the ice at all? No. Okay, yeah, I really don't know why I thought that would work. I'm sorry We're about just gonna that. just going to keep rinsing and repeating. What do, what do you guys have? Maybe we can melt the ice. But then wouldn't it just be water yeah. again? Oh. I feel like we need to break it. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly I don't know chemistry. Or um Thermodynamics. The... Is there thermodynamics in this magical world? Yes. Oh, I have an idea. Oh, what is it? I did see I did see like a hammer in that room, right? Yes, okay. there was many. Okay. I'm one of them was missing too. Okay. With my skills of conjuration magic, I'm going to conjure okay. up a hammer. Uh, a small flat headed hammer appears in your hand. It is perfectly Three gnome size. No <laughs> <laughs> I am not Thor. <laughs> and I'll What would you like to do with your newfound hammer uh smash the ice if i can make an attack roll with a hammer <laughs> that's a three <laughs> we are the worst um <laughs> it bounces harmlessly off of the outer shell of this orb sending a I slight can't... shimmer over the entire surface of the ice oh yeah my hammer's gone now. arcane at integrity oh Hammer is just my hammer is gone hand. because it it dealt it damage, took damage or it, like yeah it, it made contact yeah, so now it's yeah. just gone. <laughs> oh, um, can I try to stab it with my oh. dagger? You can absolutely try to stab it with your dagger. 
With my, um, with one of my daggers. Sure. <laughs> you got three, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. Um, do I add anything to it? Or yeah, no? make it a normal attack. So that is a six. Oh, my God. Why are we all the worst? <laughs> you hit it and chip it a little bit on the ward, which surrounds this orb. The orb is chipped, but Your not dagger. the... Oh, the orb is oh. flawless. Perfect. The be- most beautiful ice cube you've ever seen. Our greatest enemy. Guys, I don't... Ice cube. <laughs> um, my dagger did not work. Oh my god. I mean, we need this key because the key probably gets us to the not here. My instruments didn't work. Windsor's hammer didn't work. And your dagger didn't work. I mean... What about the tools downstairs? At least if we break those, they're not our things, right? Isn't that where the hammer was? Well, Winsler yeah. conjured it out of his imagination based okay. on the image of those hammers. But it's still there. The hammer's downstairs? Yeah, they're still down there. Now yes. I will make I will make this out again. I did like I did I have seen what this key looks like. I could just make a mm-hmm. carbon copy of it that we can use. Mm-hmm. You can do that? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> oh, I, just summoned, I just summoned a hammer out of midair. <laughs> I just have to look at something and boop, I can make a copy of it. Man, that's some good as problem long solving. As, as long as it's within certain uh, conditions. Would those conditions include the key? Yeah, I think so. What are the conditions? Uh, can be no longer than three feet on one side and mm-hmm. must weigh Check. Uh, equal to or less than 10 pounds. Mm, it's a pretty big cast iron key it's bigger than that it's cast iron i don't know if it's 10 pounds Mm. could i try and see you conjure three quarters no seven eighths of the key that's frustrating which the in which direction? Part? The part that isn't the key is the part that oh, doesn't get oh, of course it's of course that it's part, that part. <laughs> I think we've had a miscommunication here. I'm saying that the little handle hoop is the part that doesn't get created. But you have the full key. Oh. oh. Gosh, oh. you guys. Oh, that's yeah, fine then. Do. Check into my humor, please. This'll do. How you said it was that it's like the tip I said goes... the key part was, yeah. oh, it's super there. You, you didn't say, say that. that. Anyways, hey, okay, <laughs> let me do, redo it. The key part is super there. It's usable, but it that won't fit on your key ring. Oh, oh no. no. Whatever will Too we bad do? We have hands. I don't think any of us has ever had a key ring before. So do you want to go unlock the gate? Yeah, let's just go do that. Yeah. Okay. Yes. You proceed downstairs, back out into this little arched hallway, um, and walk, waltz straight up to that their gate and slot the key in. Which way do you turn it? Uh, turn it right. It does not budge. Turn it left. Turn it left? It does not budge. Push Pull it, it up. 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 It does not budge. Down. It does not budge. Take it out, put it in. Wiggle? Take it out, put it in upside down. <laughs> it does not fit. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it fit the first time? Yes. It fit. It didn't move. Maybe there's a code. Maybe it's just like... too rusty. If the lock's rusty, why don't we just clean it and maybe then it'll work? Because it fit, right? Mm-hmm. Press the digitation on the rust away. I don't have it, but... What does press the digitation do? Does it just say it cleans? Yeah, I can clean or soil mm-hmm. something. That's why there was that post about mm-hmm. how you can use prestidigitation to piss someone else's pants yeah. as a power move. You clean or soil an object uh, no longer than one cubic foot. Okay, that describes this lock. The lock is free of rust. You've given it a nice beauty makeover. Okay, now I put the key in. <laughs> you put the key in. Uh, turn it right. It does not budge. Okay, turn it left. It does not budge. Okay, up and down, all around, upside down. does not budge. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> This is the worst key in existence. Maybe the um the keyhole is rusty too. Does anyone have that's included in the keyhole? The keyhole, yeah, that's the lock. (laughs) Okay. So like cleaning it means like it's not rusty at all. Like maybe Mm -hmm. it needs to be oiled. Okay. Maybe. Does anyone have oil? I have grease. <laughs> I yeah, have... grease it up, okay. man. Uh, <laughs> grease up I'm that gonna, hole. I have... I'm going to take out my trusty yeah. pork rind and... Uh... Why do you have a pork 
I needed to cast grease. You know what? That's valid. Wiggle it around, and it's also a tasty snack. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna coat the lock and the key in oil (laughs) and grease. Uh, it's coated in grease. Okay, now it's I very can... slippery. It's all dripping on the ground. Okay, insert the key. Gross, but good. You put the key in. It slides in without a sound because of the grease okay, that you right. just put in. It doesn't budge. Okay, turn it left. <laughs> it doesn't budge. Okay, up and down. Can I... Doesn't budge. Uh, pick it with the handle that's not all there. <laughs> Maybe it's too cold. Maybe the lock is frozen. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe if we heat the room up a little I'm gonna bit, walk the away. Lock will Which budge. I can I'm also die. do. I have produced flame. Let's let's okay, do I'm it. Gonna sta- Maybe that'll be the okay, thing I'm gonna, that makes it work. I'm gonna stand back. Okay. And I'm going to light the grease uh, padlock uh, on fire with produced flame. <laughs> All right, you push back your two. We're gonna set a grease. F- hey, maybe that'll burn the door down. <laughs> you s- push back your two friends and say, "Watch this, I got it." And snap your fingers, and all of a sudden, the grease is ablaze, burning very warmly. Um, it burns very quickly, and then you're left with a scorched portcullis in front of you. Okay, now I put the key in. You put the key in, it slots in kind of difficult now. You, you've gotten some char marks on the iron. Uh, I'll turn it right. Does not budge. All right, I give up. <laughs> Maybe it's because of the char marks. Maybe if we used prestidigitation to get rid of the char marks, it would be warm and it would be clean. <laughs> oh, oh, God. <laughs> clean it and I'll try to use my lockpick. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, prestidigitation. <laughs> okay, it's cleaned again. It is a pristine lock once more. What Integrity other is our be- only defilement hope. will you do to this poor lock? <laughs> and I'm going to um just do the basic, you know, pick yeah, a lock. It's just the basic. Make a uh dexterity check with your thieves tools, which I think you have proficiency in, so add your proficiency bonus. Mm-hmm. As well as your dexterity bonus. Okay. Ooh, 14 plus 3 plus 2. 14. That is a 19. Okay. Nice. With a 19. Oh. Please say it budges. Please say it budges. This magical lock does not budge. <laughs> okay, what if we try to actually... Maybe we need to grease her thieves okay. tools. Okay, what if we try to break the <laughs> lock? Alright, alright, alright. We got <laughs> okay, some okay. revolutionary thinking here. Let's come back to the drawing board. Let me, as your referee, as your instructor, as your guide into this world through my mind, paint you the beautiful picture of what so far you've encountered. You were in the the large hall. There was a bunch of glass shelves. There were some hammers. There were some saws. There was whatever. There were some nails, um, embalming tools, whatever. You came out in the hallway. There's this immaculate locked portcullis. I mean, it's not immaculate anymore. With singed tiles beneath it, (laughs) greasy walls, the whole nine yards. To the left was a door. Inside that door was a circular chamber, a cylindrical chamber with a gearbox that you could turn left and right. Turning it left raised the stairs to the second level where you found this large humanoid and this key locked in an icy sphere. So maybe because it's a magical lock, we need the actual key? The real actual key that really actually unlocks this magical lock? That seems too simple. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Surely the answer is more prestidigitation Okay, I can make another hammer and try again. Why don't we just get the actual hammer? Okay. Let's go get the actual tools to do the actual thing. You open the door, you walk to the tool cupboard, you see that the thrashing torso with a head and hands and arms has kind of stopped as it has crushed itself under about 50 jars wow, um, guy. and is not moving anymore. Um, F. <laughs> it is. It does look fairly soggy, which again is not a typical <clears throat> skin thing. Uh, you open the cupboard door, you grab three hammers, you grab three saws, you grab a bunch of nails, you grab whatever you want. And head back up to the room with the uh, humanoid in it. And <laughs> what would you like to do to this sphere? Whack it. You whack Take it. a nail and... Mm-hmm. Whack. Okay, whack it first. Okay, you whack, please. Please make a whack check. Whack check. Oh my god! Six. 
you hit the ice. You hit the yeah. ward around the ice, and it sends a nice shimmering glow around it. Almost like there's a magical ward around it. Amazing. Who's next? Who wants to whack it next? Guys, what if we use the hammer and the nail all together? You know, hit different pressure points. Oh, that's a good idea. Mm. So in it. half. <laughs> I say, I believe in you, and I'm going to give Integrity my last point of Bardic Inspiration. Oh, no, she for... still has Bardic Inspiration. Oh, she didn't use it yet? No. I don't I believe did. in you, oh, never mind. Oh, she did use oh, it. Right. No, oh, she didn't no use I didn't. It? No, she... I was going Wait. to, but then... <laughs> She I was going believe to believe in you or not. She wanted to, but she realized that she couldn't because that's what she didn't. when she pulled okay. all the jars onto the hand or the yes. arm. Okay, I'll believe in her later. Okay, She's you still have this. this amazing inspiration. You're just jamming to this song that Mira played you like 20 minutes ago. Yeah. <laughs> what do you want to do? I'm going to take one of the nails mm-hmm. and I'm going to mm. like chisel mm. at it. Uh, mm. Make a chisel check. Make a chisel check. <laughs> Wait, um plus a D6. Plus a D6? <laughs> oh, this is so funny. This is horrible. <laughs> That's a six. <laughs> what did you roll? I rolled a three and a three on the D6. <laughs> okay. Um you hit the nail, the nail bends, the hammer hits your thumb. Um, a shimmering field around the orb glows and shimmers and glows like magical wards do, which all of you have learned about having spent two weeks at magical school about magical wards. <laughs> wow, amazing. Hey, Winsler, mm-hmm. do you want to grease up this ice ball now? No. For some reason? <laughs> no. I don't know. <laughs> What's up? I What's the big the strategy? Flesh man. Ah, uh, okay. You want to inspect the flesh, man? Give me an investigation check. Uh, that's a thirteen. Mm. Um, it seems like the stitching around his skull was recent. Um, about a week or so ago was the most recent um stitching. Um, but it seems to have been stopped halfway through because the actual threads and uh, needle are still there just hanging away from it so almost like it was just on the verge of being complete but not i'm going to continue okay where mm. they left off interesting yep. okay make a medicine will check be its daddies. Uh, make a medicine check wow that's an 18 okay with an 18 you manage to stitch its head up just fine it is still missing three eyes I'll take mine. No. <laughs> Were there eyes in those jars back there? Yeah, there was probably a few jars of ice. Oh my God, we have to go back. Like olives. Next to the olives. I say BRB, and I'm going to go get some eyes for, for Winsler. Absolutely. You run down, grab a jar of eyes. What color eyes do you want to grab? I want to get, like, each one should be a different color. Uh, okay, like a okay. green, a blue, a brown. How about one that's all brown and rotten? How about one that's just um, white and one that has blue? That sounds absolutely amazing. Because that's what you find. Yeah. Okay. You run back upstairs with these this great assortment and give them to Winsler. I think you'll like these. Uh, this is not funny. We're making a person. Have fun. I don't like that you're handing me these eyes. No, it's really gross. You got uh, this. Good luck, I'll buddy. I'll just mage hand these eyes into the socket. Absolutely. Give me a sleight of hand for that finesse. Well, that's not finesse at all. That's an eight. An eight. Um, just jamming. It it's in a it. bit force. It's a bit forceful. Some of the you, I, one of the eyes might have gotten burst, but that's not any of your concern. It's not your eye. It's this f- fleshy fool's eye. Um, as you put the final uh, eye in, the creature starts to twitch. Um, at this point, the ice sphere drops to the ground. And rolls around a little bit and hits the wall, but doesn't. The key's still embedded inside of it, and the golem begins to um, sit up. Is there anything you would like to do? Uh, hide. <laughs> Where? Uh, under the table. Okay, make a stealth check. It's twelve. Okay, you think you're hidden. 
Anything else, you two, in this split second? If I if I see Winsler hiding, I'm gonna hide as well. Make a he made this check. thing, sort of. Okay. Eleven plus fifteen. Okay, you think you're hidden as well. Integrity. The lone Integrity's survivor. Integrity's a rogue. She got this. I am going to hide as well. Where? Um. Hmm. So, the door does does the door open inside or outside? The door opens out. The door opens out, okay. and it's at the foot of the table. So, if the this golem was to sit up, its feet would be pointing towards the door. Hmm. And there's like nowhere to hide other than the table. It seems a pretty, uh, poor. In my opinion, yeah, like, I would say nowhere. that that seems like it. You could try to like crouch behind the ice ball if you wanted, but that's your discretion. No, I'm gonna hide at the table. Okay, give me a stealth check. That is um, an eighteen. Okay. Um, the three of you quickly duck underneath this table. Uh, the golem sits up the table creaking and as it um puts most of its weight towards the foot of the table the table starts to lift up and then as it stands it slams back down um and it lumbers out and pushes the door open and you hear it um stomp down the stairs great should we follow it what about the key well it fell as soon as he stood up maybe the magic went away or i don't know should we take it with us? Yeah. I'm going to pick it up and kind of grab it and hold it. It's like a big sphere of ice. Yeah, it's, it's, that's not unholdable, is it? Okay. Yeah, you can hold it. It's just cold. That's okay. Okay. Sure. You're holding a big goldfish-sized ball of ice now with a key inside it. What now, team? We're going to quietly follow the... Mm, tiptoe behind him. Very. This is very Scooby-Doo, you know? Yeah. <laughs> hide under the table gonna where the monster we're gonna go into one door it's gonna come mm-hmm. out another mm-hmm. should we follow him? it's worth a try so you guys creep to the edge of the stairs and see that it has exited leaving the door to the hallway open would you like to continue down? yeah, yeah. okay um, it turns and goes into the um what should I like the large hall with the shelves and the jars, the jar hall. Um, and after a few seconds, it starts to walk back and comes back towards the um, tower that you're standing in. So it just walked around and to... walked back. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go rehide. <laughs> sure. You run upstairs. Because and... we're right behind him, right? You're like peeking around the door watching him. Okay. So I'm already hidden. Okay. Right? We're not doing like a Tom and Jerry, like we're standing okay. right behind it and I then it turns like, around like and then we wrap around the other no, way. No, no, you're not <laughs> capable enough to walk two feet behind this thing. Um, I imagined you were watching it from yeah, the yeah, end yeah, of the yeah. hallway, yeah. Okay, that's So makes you're sense. still in like the cylindrical base or like the cylindrical tower. Okay. And it's walking back towards you all. Hmm. I'm but if it were to, to walk towards us and it were to like be standing up and it were to look at the table, would it be able to see if there was like a person under there? Because mm. it's pretty tall, and I feel like the angle it would yeah. be like, coming from. It would probably would be have a hard high. time. I'm gonna duck back under the table. Okay. Me too. Okay. I will as well, I guess. Okay. <laughs> it walks back up the stairs into the room, stands there for a few seconds, turns around, and walks back down the stairs and out of the tower. I I'm think gonna... it's just kind of patrolling, like a like a predecided route. Mm. You stole what I was thinking. Maybe easy to predict <laughs> then. Is there any other places? Maybe it's supposed to be like a guard. Maybe would there be any other places along his route that we could probably hide underneath while he passes, other than the room that we're in right now? Um, there's that pool of water. How much time, like approximately, does he, would he have, would he spend in that room? It takes like, a. Would we... About a minute. He's very slow and lumbery. So we might drown ourselves doing that, but we also might be able to hide in there. Is that what you're saying? Uh-huh. You could probably hold your breath for a minute. I think the actual in-game rule is like 
constitution modifier. One minute plus your constitution modifier times minutes. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. So the minimum you can hold your breath for is a minute. That's fine. Okay. So you're all going to try to hide in this pool of water? I guess. Me with my me with my ice ball. Mm-hmm. Is that the plan, gang? I think that's the plan. Yeah, I guess that's the plan. Okay. So you wait for this lumbering golem to walk out of the tower and then creep slowly down the stairs. I need stealth checks, obviously. Fair. 13. 17. Mm-hmm. Or okay uh winsler the condensation that's kind of accumulated on the stairs uh as you're going down first because you always go first you slip and take a fa- like a hefty tumble um down the stairs and just kind of roll down them um making a pretty loud noise does the golem notice he's outside of the room you have no idea <laughs> <laughs> thanks for adding fully it really yeah. makes it a more immersive experience yeah it really aids the immersion when you uh flop 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 put you sh- yeah yeah <laughs> nailed it exactly you took the sounds right out of my mind um you hear steps coming towards the room i'm gonna hide in the water okay Plump. i'm, I'm gonna hide it okay winsler uh hide in the water okay you hide in the water. Nice the squad. golem walks into the room almost seconds after you jumped into the water and walks directly up the stairs. It stays there for 15 or so seconds, longer than it normally does, and uh, proceeds back down the stairs on its regular path. I guess we're good. So at what point in its rotation did you want to... Um, oh, this water. It's extremely warm. So your ice... Oh, is it melting nice? Yeah. I will say you just have a key now. Awesome. And a very uncomfortable sweat and water feeling. Hey, I don't want to be in here anymore. <laughs> okay. What ta- what period of his of its um patrol would you like to go and make a run for the I think game? as soon as it leaves the room, right? Because that would give us the most time to make a run yeah, for it. Yeah, as soon mm-hmm. as soon as we see only its like feet when it's at the top of the okay. it's at the top of the step. Shh. Easy to time. Um it takes the turn around the corner. And you all run out and make it easily. It's not a very long corridor to the um, gate just as it enters into the large hall of body parts. I turn the key. Put the key in the you thing turn the and I turn key. the key. The uh, it move, gate. Move. It doesn't move. <laughs> the gate slides upwards and um, you hear footsteps coming from the hall to your, like behind you where the golem went, approaching you. Before you, to reiterate, is a small plain table with um, six or seven, let's say seven, uh, silver goblets upon it. Can we slam... And then... Oh. No, I was just going to say, can we slam the gate shut as soon as we go inside? It has receded into the ceiling. Oh, I oh. definitely don't want to be followed by this thing. Sprint. Yeah. You're just going to run? Sprint. Okay. You guys reach this table very easily. Behind you, you see the golem try to pursue you, um, sprinting behind you for about 20 feet um, very quickly. Well, that's uh, terrifying. And, like, it very obviously would have outpaced you, um, but it is stopped in its tracks uh, just beneath, like at the exact plane where the uh, gate would have been. And it seems to just stand there staring at you. You're now in a room. It's a rectangular room. Um, to your left, you couldn't see prior, um, is a pristine white wood door, which seems to match all of, or to, seems to be not the same decor as the rest of this uh, little laboratory. On the table is these seven goblets of silver. Uh, in three of them is a red liquid. Hmm. Does the liquid, like, if I observe the liquid, does it seem familiar? Does it have an interesting, like, smell or its viscosity or anything? It that would... seems to bubble and it smells like raspberries. Hmm. What's Anne of Green Gables this Sounds shit? Sounds like poison. No, um. I don't think I'm of age yet. Uh, and the door, is that our only way kind of to continue through where we're going? 
uh it's either that large door or back towards your friend the golem your child the golem our son well as much as i hate to be a parent abandoning their baby i feel like if there's a giant golem staring at us Mm -hmm. i'm gonna try to open the white door absolutely it opens easily it's it's a double door so it swings open uh before you you see as if you're in the ceiling uh and you're looking down upon a room um it's a bit mind-boggling at first because you're standing on the floor and you're staring at another floor if that makes sense like like no like you're standing and you're if you were to orient Th- that room it's almost like that room was tipped on its side to you and but if you were going to orient yourself towards that room it's almost like you are standing on the wall but above the door hmm. or above this room and on the ground inside this room you see um scattered books and sand that are just like piled and it's much uh you feel much um more comfortable humidity blow in from this room and um it seems to be much better lit so if that was someone's lab maybe this here with the goblets was someone's dining room and this was like someone's living room Hmm. i mean i don't know but Mm, seems logical I don't even know what... Okay, yeah, I'll do a better job. So imagine you have a room that's just a regular square room and you have it like a shaft in the ceiling. You Mm -hmm. guys would be of the perspective of standing on the side of the shaft. Like the wall. Like It's like we're standing on a wall. Looking down through the ceiling of the So opposite to the door is the floor. Yes. Okay. Does that make sense? The gravity here still works like normally. Where you're standing, it's perfectly fine. So the actual door of, like, this other room, then, is that, like, on the floor or ceiling, or is that accessible to us? The actual door of this other room. Well, I mean, I, is there another door in this so room? So the one that you've opened... Not uh, the one we're coming from, but the if room. there's another door okay, in the okay. room. Uh, the one in the room seems to be oriented so that the surface you're looking at is the okay, ground. Okay, okay. I jump. You jump. Uh, you fall about 20 feet. Make a dexterity saving throw. Ouch. With advantage, because there's comfy books. My books are comfy. Uh, That was a non-natural 20. Okay. You managed to um, avoid any of the damage that falling would have given you. And land in a small, soft heap of moldy books. Gross. Mm -hmm. Are you okay? Uh, Are you you, hurt? You now look up and see your friends uh, standing on the wall of a non-existent like you don't see the door that you just opened you just see them in a completely disconnected hallway staring down at you yeah i think i'm okay but wow this room's weird okay what is it like it's like there's no there's no ceiling it's just a hallway i just see you both when you look around you see that the walls are made of this um light colored stone in the um right hand wall is a door which reads returns and uh scattered about the room is just books some of them are moldy a very few of them actually are moldy most of them are very intact um and looking down at the ones you're sitting on on the cover of all of them it just says book wow (laughs) book I enjoy reading book and eating food. <laughs> Integrity, Miro, what would you like to do? Okay, I'm glad he's okay, but if you're going to jump, tell me, because I can make you feather fall. I'm going to jump. Are you going to jump? I have no choice. I'm going to jump. I'm going to jump, and I'm going to feather okay. fall us both. Okay, you guys uh, fall softly to the ground and land in a fairly deep pile of books and sand. Um above you the non-existent doors slam shut and the hallway disappears oh leaving just an empty like this same uh ripped off ceiling where you can see the sun the room with the stairs which you can see over the wall seems to be a bit closer Hmm. i guess we're getting there i guess we're doing something 
I suppose we're making progress. The um the door that says returns, that's like a library thing, yes? Because, yeah, my mm-hmm. my dad is a librarian. I know libraries. I'm going uh, <laughs> to I'm gonna open it up. Okay. Uh, before you, you see a brass declined slope, which seems to twist around in a spiral. Mm-hmm. You don't see where it goes. Ooh, it's like a slide. Inside the door? Yeah. 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 How, how, like, is it big enough for a person to fit through? Or like? It looks, yeah, it's big enough for a person to fit through. Oh, yeah, because at a library, when you want to put the books back, people just put them down here, and there's usually somewhere that collects them. I I guess this is where we need to go. Time to get collected. I think should slide down it. But, but just to be sure, in case that it's like a really big fall, maybe we should tie a rope somewhere mm-hmm. so that we could slide down mm-hmm. with caution. That is a good idea. We should where all you have tie the rope, rope around us. You, I feel like your rope has really helped us. It's been very useful. It's like disgusting well. at this point. It's covered in grease. It's like covered in water. <laughs> Salty. Gross. Gross rope. And yet it's beautiful. 50 feet of rope. Is there any surface um, that I can tie it to There's in that room? There's like probably like a um, candle holder that's a t- on the wall that's made of metal and fastened fairly securely to your best estimations. Um, so I'm going to tie it to that. Absolutely. You now have 45 feet of rope to play with on this slide. And then I'm going to start sliding down. Okay. Are you holding onto the rope in a way that of you course, would get yes. rope burn? Uh, no. Like, I'm not going to okay. slide down. I'm sort of, like, going to... Mm. Oh, okay, okay. Slowly lower yourself. Yes. So just until the bottom of your rope? Yes. You make it around three or four of these corkscrew bends and then find yourself short. Uh, the slide continues, and your rope does not. I'm going to call out to my friends, and I'm like, the slide's too long. Integrity, are you okay? Yes, but I'm at the end of my rope, and <laughs> I can't see anything. <laughs> Integrity, we're all at the end of our ropes. Is everything okay? Oh, my God. Oh, I thought you guys were still at <laughs> yeah. the stairs, or mean you know, at the door. <laughs> yeah, but, like, we're all super stressed out. Oh. Okay, now... I have a question. Do you not understand the pun of I'm at the end of my rope? <laughs> like the expression? <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, I'm so slow. <laughs> what no, a I hilarious have, did you want to do something? I have a question for you, Mr. Omnipotent Force in the sky. I'm not an omnipotent <laughs> force, but I am the DM. What can I do for you? Um, If I were to cast Enlarge on the rope, would that mm. would would you say that doubles it, in every dimension? Okay, so it would it would <laughs> become longer. Yeah. Okay. It would become a hundred feet thicker. of very thick rope. How are you with very thick, thick rope? I yell down. <laughs> um, I think I can hold on to really big. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> big ropes. Okay, I'm just gonna cast in large on the rope. Lewd. Fuck off. <laughs> Uh, the rope extends 100 feet. <laughs> Integrity, since you're already at the bottom of it, um, you just kind of, like, sprout. It's almost like a plant is just growing really fast, okay. and the rope just sprouts out from the So it's probably, like, this big now. Um, yeah. Okay, then... Uh, so you find yourself now dangling, um, or you're sliding very, like, at a normal pace, uh, and you come out into a large pile of books and land on your butt holding this rope. Just more books? Yeah, in this, so to describe this room, it is another, it's similar, although the books are a bit more organized in the sense of all of them look like they slid down this ramp, or this slide, this chute, the return chute. Um, There's a door, or there's another portcullis to your right. There is a circular passage raised a couple feet off of the ground to your left, and in front of you are two to your best approximation, um, little humanoids with wings made of entirely of dust, and they are pushing over a neatly stacked pile of books and opening it each book and touching every single page and smearing their dust everywhere. Wow. And the second they see you, they just go, oh no, and then take off with their little wings off into the sky. Oh no. The little shits. 
<laughs> but they don't look like the um the people or the humanoids in the library, right? No, they look completely distinct. Little vandalism boys. <laughs> like they just look like little imps made of dust. I'm gonna call out to I my think friends. They're impetuous. Tell them. Mm-hmm. Um. Well, I'm somewhere. You guys should come down. Kate, coming. And I just slide down. I mean, I don't need to hold on to the rope because I know we can use the rope to climb back up if we need it. Yeah. What's the fun in using a rope? Yeah, though? exactly. Just slide. Uh, you go very fast and it's very fun and you come out and I assume integrity moved out of the way and you hit these books and books aren't really designed to stop force. Um, so it kind of hurts, yeah. but it was very fun. So it's a good payoff. Winsler, do you want to go sliding? I want to cast Greased on the slide. Ooh, I'm okay. super gonna move out of the way. <laughs> okay, um, you hear the sound of the speed, like the the sound barrier breaking. That's a joke. Um, but Winsler, you go incredibly fast, and as you hit the pile of books at the bottom, you take five bludgeoning damage Ouch. and go worth it. F- like, you know when you roll down the hill, like on your side, and then you get out of control and you just kind of roll and roll and roll, and then it starts to hurt. Yes, yeah. it's the best feeling in the world. That's what happens to Winsler as he just flies across the room in a spiral and hits the up opposite wall. Oh my god, dude, are you okay? I mean, first of all, it looks super fun, but dude, are you okay? Oh, that was fun. Hell yeah, awesome. Where are we? Everything hurts. Okay, so there's this... Um, there's the portcullis and there's the other door, right? Very tar portcullis, tall portcullis to your right it's a very tall and narrow is it like um, the other one that has it, the keyhole see... and the no it is not it has no keyhole it's made of a brassy steel or a brassy metal um like not quite brass but like yellowish color um and beyond it you see a staircase but the staircase is on the ceiling mm-hmm. and there's no staircase on the actual floor um to your left is that circular um, passageway. That It looks big enough that you could crawl into it and then crawl down it. Um, but it's a few feet off the floor. Okay. What would you like to do? Mm. I think this is kind of like the stair puzzle in the other one, right? Where we need to do something to make the stairs, like, work? Yeah. Maybe. So can we look around for anything? Like, sure. Investigate? Roll investigation. Mm. Oh, that's a no. seven. I don't know why I said that in French. It's a nine. <laughs> it's okay. I speak French. Chill. But our listeners might not. I got five. You got a five. Mm. So what were the total rolls? Five, nine, what? Seven. <laughs> There's a lot of books that are labeled book. Detective squad. <laughs> we figured it out. Well, they're all in different colors. Are they um, in terms they're of like, all books. because you mentioned something about organization in terms of the filing system. Are they using like mm-hmm. any recognizable mm-hmm. one? I don't know if the Dewey Decimal System exists in this world, but like, is there anything that would like delineate how the books are being organized? Mm-hmm. The filing system they seem to be using is to throw them on the ground and cover them in dust. Well, that is because that that's is a valid how system. every single book is arranged. Oh, my allergies. Dust and sand. Well, that's a valid system in and of itself. I'm going to try to crawl through the little passageway because I feel like if there is going to be a solution to the portcullis on the other side, we're going to have to dig deep and find it. You climb through the hole, you crawl, um, and then you see, find yourself at the opening of a, another tall cylindrical chamber. Um, there's a platform about a foot in front of you that's cylindrical. It is slightly smaller than the area of the cylinder. So it's like a cross-sectional platform. Um, sitting on it is a, like a wheel, like a ship wheel almost. Um, and then d- like there's a space up that goes 30 feet and a space down that goes 30 feet. And you see holes on both ends of this cylinder. How and big? It, like kind of tapers to a hole. They're about the same size as the hole you just crawled through. Okay. Um, and then on the opposite side of this platform is a hole that is identical to the one you crawled through okay hey guys yeah Yeah. there's a wheel out here i'm gonna turn it and can you guys tell me if anything in the other room changes sure i try to turn it how far do you want to turn it 
Um, does it move when I try to turn it? Mm-hmm. I'm just going to keep turning it until I hear something from my friends. Okay. As you turn it, the room you're in starts to spin. Oh, dear. The platform you're actually standing on remains stationary, but the room itself spins. Um, do you still want to continue spinning it? No, I stop and I say, guys, um, is anything uh, happening out here? Because there's something happening in here. So as Mira yelled at you, I, I, mean, I think I'm going to spin it and then began to spin it. Um, the room you were in started to shift. Like almost like it was being rotated. Uh-oh. So there's no more hole between us. No, she didn't rotate it completely. So, but the hole's smaller. The whole passageway is the same. S- okay. Uh, it's just on an angle. Like a slight angle. Like instead of being at zero degrees, you're at like 10 degrees. I think that if you continue doing that, we will fall through. Okay, okay, one sec. And I, uh, I try to put it back. Okay, you return it to normal. I'm gonna... Come back into the other room and I say, okay, there were a whole mm-hmm. bunch of rooms like this one. I think if we go in there and we turn it, that can move the other rooms around. Hmm. Well, there's a staircase in here, isn't there? Mm-hmm. It's upside down. Ah, I see. I see. So we, maybe so we should... So I think if we turn the other, if we turn the whole thing upside down and then we go back in here... We might be able mm-hmm. to use the stairs. Sounds worth a shot. I think that might work. Yeah, but maybe we should all go in the room together so nobody gets, you know, flip, flipped over. Yes. That might be right. a little bit, like, not good. <laughs> okay. So all three of you crawl back into this large cylindrical room with the uh, ship wheel uh, and are standing on this platform. Who wants to spin it? I think we should all spin it. Okay, all three of you can spin Combined it at the same now. time. How far do you want to spin it? As far as it can go. As far as it can go? Well, until the thing is upside down, right? Because I, I only span, spun it partway and it moved a little, but we want to do like mm-hmm. one like one mm-hmm. cycle of rotation. So you want, yeah, you want it to be 180 degrees, yeah. Yeah. right? Okay, so you spin the wheel 180 degrees. The room you're in shifts 90 degrees so that the long sides of the um tube that you're in are now connected to those passages the one connecting to the room you were just in and one connecting to a room on the far side um and you're remain stationary on this platform what would you like to do so to your eye there's no discernible change of the dungeon though you haven't explored you can only judge based on what you've seen in this room well it should be turned on its side by now right if it was like upside down before and it made a 90 degree shift. You turn the wheel 180 degrees. But the room shifted 90 degrees, right? The room you're in shifted 90 degrees. Oh, okay. I thought you meant the other room shifted 90 degrees. You can't see the other room. I'm going to go back in then. Okay. The room, the other room seems to have shifted 180 degrees. All the books okay. are now on the floor. The previous floor is now gone as it is now the ceiling. The gate, the portcullis, has descended into the ground almost like it was gravity operated and just being held in place and there is a set of beautiful stairs i think it worked toward the stairs okay you guys climb the stairs they spiral around a few times and you rise up into a small uh reading room to say um however it, the chairs are on the roof, and so are the bookshelves, and all of the books and pillows have fallen onto the ground. Amidst these books and pillows is a, uh, what, integrity, what you saw earlier, except this time, instead of made of dust, made of sand, a little imp-like creature that seems to be made of sand, um, wearing a small little, um, velvet overcoat, and they look up at you, up from below this pile of books, and go, You ruined my downtime! Uh, sorry. I guess we made it your up time then. He throws a book at you. Ah! Uh, Uh, Who who are you? And that's where we're going to end the episode. Oh boy, spicy. Um, Carla, do you want to do the outro, please? No. Oh, okay. Sarah, can you do the outro, please? No. Ben, can you do the outro, please? Uh.
I am not prepared today. I can actually do the outro. I just thought that would flow well if somebody <laughs> Sarah, really needs it. <laughs> Sarah, can you do the outro, please? <clears throat> Absolutely. Thank you for listening to Trials and Trebuchets. If you enjoyed this episode or any other episode, please leave us a review or a rating on iTunes. It would really help us out a lot. If you want to get into contact with us or have previews of any of the upcoming episodes, please follow us on Instagram or Twitter at the handle at Trials and Trebs. Thank you everyone for listening. From the bottom of my heart, it means so much to me that you listen to my show. Um, and their show. It's their show. It's not just my show. <laughs> it's our show, um, comrade. Our Selfish show. Bastard. Um, anyways, I'll s- we'll see you next Wednesday. Bye. 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 Bye.